thank you sarika that was a wonderful uh, introduction in fact uh, before getting started with uh, sharing my screen i would like to record my uh, sincere gratitude to the vet management and uh, the principal of the college and uh, the secretary and all the authorities of the college who have given me a forum here to talk and my special thanks to dr shakila matthews uh well now uh, shall i share my screen to get started with yes ma'am you can share your screen okay thank you uh warm greetings to every learned person who's listening to me now um i'm just sharing my screen it is just a check uh, with the coordinators of this webinar my is my screen seen uh, sarika Yes, ma'am. We can see your screen, ma'am. Okay, that's great. I go for FI option and slide presentation. Yes, ma'am. One well let us get started with today's uh, topic my topic for today is academic uh, writing and research metrics for teachers of english most uh, probably i have come across the saying from many english faculty members and people from art stream saying that uh, we have less number of journals that's why we are not able to get a big scope for publishing it is not so in fact actually we have a lot of scope and we have ample journals only thing is it is a matter of our exploration so how to explore things that uh, that's what we're going to see uh, my research uh, i mean my lecture comprises uh, six uh, titles here subtitles one is academic writing another one is formatting plagiarism indexed journals publishing and what you see as google scholar how to become a google scholar so all these arenas we are going to explore before getting started with academic writing we also call this academic writing as a, a, a research writing or a scholarly writing what a scholarly writing actually demands if we explore into that we come to know that a scholarly writing should have these components that you are seeing on the screen so your scholarly writing should comprise an introduction a method results and discussion so whether you belong to science stream or an art stream irrespective of that your scholarly writing should undergo this imrd and some people call it as imard also well so when we talk about this introduction method results and discussion how we uh, do it and how we go about writing uh, such thing so sand clock structure it should have your research structure when you write your uh, this four component uh, research writing imrd it should have a sand clock structure you are writing an introduction of your academic or a scholarly writing you understand a research area your research field and you get started with that and then you do a survey of literature you collect data you go for a secondary data collection and then uh, you accumulate all those things in one particular place and sometimes no you fumble where to accumulate it whether there are software tools of course we have software tools we'll see that also and we frame a hypothesis on which we work on and we arrive at the hypothesis whether we are proving it whether we have got any branching out of the hypothesis at the end of our research all these things we will come to see only when we sum up our research when, when we conclude our research so we go the first portion comprises your introduction literature survey and hypothesis it is like a sand clock it is a broader area your introduction it should, should give a glimpses of the entire research that you are going to pursue and slowly slowly when you are narrowing down your research it is like the sand clock structure that you are seeing well let me take a laser tool so that i can show it on the screen also so it goes like this see in the, on the screen it should uh, you will narrow down with your method that you have devised for your research 
when when you uh, talk about the method that you have devised for your research then you explain it and whatever observations through the method that you record all those information what is the analytic tool that you use there all the informations that you jot down and you uh, uh, write it in your uh, uh, scholarly writing then you talk about either the summation if it is a literature study or a literature thesis uh, you go for a summation or if it is the nlt thesis you definitely would have come across lot of uh, uh, software tools and you would have come across a statistical measurement and all those things you go for a conclusion well now so it should your research should have um, uh what to say your research should should have this uh, sand clock type uh, of a structure well now points to ponder before we get started with when we start our research writing or what we call as academic writing we write for uh, a research focus with a research focus we start our writing another aspect is uh, you would have come across many novels you might be a very uh, you might be an avid reader of novels so some are best sellers Uh, and some novelists don't have a literary status whereas they will be best sellers some novels and writers do have a literary standards no or uh, uh, based on this we can call certain writing as a popular writing or a best sellers writers who uh, aim their best selling of their books well then uh, another type of writing is research writing that is what we are now speaking well now uh, journal identification when you do this research writing what are the points that you should have in mind what are the points that you should ponder upon uh, to write your research writing in the best way possible so these are the informations that i felt uh, of uh, i felt to share with you journal identification before when we start to write an article uh, maybe i'm i'm a phd scholar suppose say for example i completed my phd in 2009 i'm just uh, assuming that suppose you are a phd scholar and you are working on your uh, research uh, article you have to identify your journal first how do you identify your journal now based on your field of specialization in which you are working based on the area of research that you are working so ba uh, based on that you have to go for a uh, selection of journal then after selecting a journal how to select a journal all these things are part of my lecture i'll tell you uh, and then after selecting a journal what you have to do when it is an indexed journal certainly you have to create an account with a login account you get me so you have to create a login id and uh, uh, you create a login id with that uh, account and then uh, uh, you go about it i thought chat box is asking some questions no it is just a good afternoon message okay uh, i close the chat box well so then uh, creation of an individual account and after that you go for authorial guidelines you have now identified your field of research after identifying your field of research you was uh, exploring which journal would be a suitable journal for your field of research and after exploring that uh, you create a login account with that journal of course it's an open access when it is an open access when it comes under doaj what we call as directory of open access uh, journals uh, you create a free login id okay so when you create a free login id and you get started with uh, your article uploading you will have a provision of uploading your article in such journals when you get started with a uh, such an identification then what else you have to do you have to go for a referencing sources so you would have taken citations you would have uh, included citations quotations and uh, your references should be properly given in your uh, work cited or uh, what you call as bibliography so how to do it when you sit and write a page after page and uh, it becomes laborious to jot down each and every citation each and every reference so for that what kind of a tool would be a suitable tool and how we can make use of that we'll see so we need to know that also before we get started with an academic writing so first thing what we have to know is we need to identify the journal then we are creating an account with the journal then we have to read we have to be very thorough with the authorial guidelines of the journal then we go for the reference sources and uh, how to uh, 
accommodate all those reference sources into my reference or work cited as a part of my uh, paper, research paper, for that which software tool I can use so that there won't be any kind of a blunder. Uh, and it will be accommodated very neatly into the structure, what we call as MLA, PA, Chicago, Harvard. So whichever index, indexing pattern or referencing pattern it is, which I should follow. So because it differs from journal to journal. One journal would opt for a PA format, one would opt for a Harvard format, Purdue University format is there. So it differs from journal to journal. So when you talk about these journals and references, of course, we should say thanks to um, uh, Professor Gary Field, uh, who was actually the father of who, who was addressed as father of citation. And uh, we are entitled to duly acknowledge the author who has really penned in the perspective and we are bringing it into our writing. So we have to duly acknowledge for that we are using the reference software tools and how we have to use it, we'll be seeing then plagiarism checking. After this, we have to come across plagiarism checking. You have finished off with your entire uh, scholarly writing, then plagiarism becomes the highest knowingly or unknowingly, intentionally or unintentionally, you would have uh, uh, maybe uh, some portions of your papers would have been plagiarized for which, which plagiarism tool would be a best tool for you to search it online and check it online. All these things we need to know when we get started with academic writing. Then completion of submission procedure. After we finish all these things, we are now satisfied and confident with whatever we have written now. So in that case, I should be ready to submit it online. Then I submit it uh, in an open access journal indexed journal of course when i submit it in an indexed journal so when i upload it to online what are the procedures of that particular journal and have i followed all those things to get my journal uh, accessed we i will get an accession number if i properly submit it as per the instructions and procedures given by the journal authorities and editorial board uh, i will definitely get an accession number immediately and that accession number will tell me with which reviewer my paper is and uh, what kind of a review, whether it is a double blind review or a triple blind review. So what kind of a peer review process my article is undergoing. So all these things I can have a track record. As you have a track record of your Amazon parcel today. So you say, no, so uh, I want to track my uh, parcel. So I just want to know from whether it is out, or out for delivery and all those things. Similarly, you can track your paper. Well, now let us go to the next uh, point. So uh, we need to be very thorough with all these uh, six. At this point, I would like to give you a tip. Swayam has given you uh, a course that you can pursue. This is an additional tip which I'm giving at this point about academic writing. If you want to get to know about academic writing, so Swayam gives an opportunity and I think uh, the enrollment is uh, still going on. And... Uh, you can check it with that learner, uh, learners enrolled so far. This I actually, when I was preparing the PPT two days back, I saw this uh, two, three days back, I, I saw this enrollment number. Now I don't know how much uh, uh, people have enrolled. This is not only for students, but also for faculty members. It's a, uh, this course you can take up. See here, uh, you see, you know, the course shall be helpful for PG students, research scholars, young scientists and faculty. Thanks to MHRD for this YM venture, we have to say. So uh, it is the venture of MHRD today. We have Swayam and we get a lot of free courses also to update ourselves. So to update yourself on academic writing, if you're really interested, if you want to uh, uh, get to know what is the difference between various kinds of academic writing and how to avoid plagiarism and all these things in detail, how to write a research paper, how to review a paper, how to uh, make use of OERs, open educational resources, all these things are covered under this. And that is what you see as a component here. Eight points are given here as a component and uh, you can uh, go through it at your own uh, pace of time. Now I move on to the next uh, uh, slide. Well, so when you go to the Swayam, how should I join? You will have a question. So there you have in the previous slide, if you have seen, there is an option, a link. If you click on that link to join, it will uh, make you bring to this particular uh, page and where you can fill your profile and you can join. You can save it and you can join if you are given a uh, privilege and if you get an opportunity to take up the course, you can take up the course now. So academic writing, when we speak of academic writing, what are the things we have seen? We have seen uh, uh, it has to be, uh, it is aimed for getting published in any indexed journal, 
right? So when we speak about this indexed journals, naturally these indexed journals follow a style, right? Academic writing follows a style. So when I when we say academic writing follows a style, what are the styles that we have to come across that we are going to see under formatting? So when I um, see that under formatting, I see uh, formatting when I speak, most of us would have uh, come across this MLA 8th edition and we have been using this MLA 8th edition for our research writing and to review the research writing of our scholars or suppose you're working already as reviewers or editors in certain journals, maybe whichever pattern they want you to edit the paper that they send it to you based on which you will opt either for APA or Harvard or Chicago uh, or MLA like that. So MLA stands for Modern Language Association. And uh, this eighth edition we have started following. I simplify this MLA format uh, in a formula called AutoWin PPL. A-T-T-O-V-N, AutoWin PPL. A stands for, you have to write the author. A stands for author. First, when you uh, refer uh, or, uh, uh, or when you give a reference, in your reference, how do you get started with? You give the name of the author and then uh, title of the source. That is optional, actually. As per MLA 8th edition, title of the source is given as optional. And title of the container in which journal it has been published. Okay, so title of the container you write. Auto O stands for uh, other contributors who are the, sometimes we write et al. So not only a single writer, there are more than one writer. So in that case, we go for et al option. So who are the other contributors? They also are, uh, you have to make a mention of them. Then you write about the version number and uh, number, suppose you have an issue number, then that you publish and the publisher, who is the publisher, you make a mention of it. If you have the publication date in that mention, you can write the publication date and the location where it is published. This is the pattern that is followed by MLA. Well, when we speak of APA, I would like you all to listen to this. One second. Now you can listen to this to get to know about APA. The APA reference format covers quick advancements in psychological research. In particular, the idea of a standard referencing style may have originated from a dispute between James Cattle and Edward Tishner concerning the limit and the effects of orthographical revisions. Firstly, Cattle had begun to impose on research publications. In turn, Tishner believed that the editorial standards were interfering with the presentation of research findings. In this case, the need for a uniform referencing style for psychological results became evident when research in the field began yielding much information. In fact, there were a large number of publications in the field of psychology and uh, uh, there was a need, dire need felt in the style and in the format. So this APA manual was drafted in 1920s and APA style was established uh, and that's how today we have APA. Many of the journals do ask for APA format, so we need to get to know what is the APA format. So it's there, uh, we have come to know what is an APA format also. So I was just uh, making a glimpse of what was uh, what is MLA and what was a, what is APA we have seen now. So similarly, we have Oxford, Chicago and other formats also that we follow. It is based on the journal to which I'm going to send my write-up. I'm going to send my research article. That's how I should have a focus when I write a write my paper. Well, now I move on. The to APA it. reference format covers big well, I move on to the next one. So now when I speak about this MLA style, many of us will go uh, and refer to the book. There is one easiest method possible. You can go to this MLA website. Go to MLA website when you're writing your thesis or your research paper, which really demands an MLA format and to, to such a journal you are sending. So the journal also demands only the MLA format. In such a case, either most of the journals will say either MLA format or APA format. So in that case, you are sending, a, you are writing an MLA format. So when you do that, uh, you can go to the website. This website really gives a hands-on training. See, this is the page that I have copied so that you all can see. You see the URL now. I take a laser tool so that you 
I can show it to you. So style.mla.org, go to that URL, you will get this page opened. When you get this page open, then what will happen? Uh, you can, uh, the, when you scroll down, when you scroll down, you come to this page, you come here. When you come here, you see two options here. So formatting a research paper and practice template, two options are given here. If you are a faculty, you want to train your scholars, you can tell your scholars to go for this practice template so that they can take up a hands-on training through the practice template right from the horse's mouth, they are informed now. So it will be very informative to them. They will enjoy doing this exercise of uh, how to do a referencing. They learn it by heart. Uh, whether we are using a referencing tool or not, it is a must that we need to know how to do the reference work manually. That is very essential. That's a fundamental knowledge and a basic knowledge a writer, a research writer needs to know. Even after knowing that, for the sake of, for condensing the laborious work, you are uh, seeking the help of a formatting tool like uh, Zotero or Mendeley or BibTeX or BibRef or uh, Bibliography. So there are so many, no? So if you're going for such research tools after knowing things manually to do the referencing, then it is well and good. But it is um, it's very essential that a research scholar, when she or he writes a paper, uh, know, should know that uh, how to do the referencing. Well, now uh, let me talk about uh, how to do this practice template. And I move on to the next page to show you how to do the practice template. This is how it will open. When, I, when you click on this practice template, probably you will, you will have actually come to this play page. This page gives you the clear picture of the formula C, author, title of the source, whatever I told you just now, optional element. This title of the source is an optional element. Then you speak about the title of the container, auto one PPLI set. That is how you can easily remember the MLA format. That is how you have to do the referencing. If a scholar is watching this, then it is very, uh, it would be easy for a scholar to take a tip. So remember this uh, as a word, auto one PPL. So the A-T-T-O, B and PPL stands for what? You will understand it easily. So now uh, container and then container, suppose there are two containers, you have to mention container one, container two and optional element that is also. So now this gives you a uh, hands-on training and a page goes like this. So as uh, it, it was not sufficient for me to contain it in a single slide, I just uh, cut the page into two and then I made it into two different slides. So you'll run, when you scroll down, you'll see the entire page. This is how the page will look like. So you will have, you can start with this. And uh, the uh, there itself, uh, the student or the scholar will get adequate information on how to uh, do the referencing with MLA. So through the MLA referencing style format or an interactive, see this uh, URL tells, it's an interactive practice template. So the template that you find there is an interactive template. You can learn a lot from that template. Well, so I would like you, so in this class, I mean, in this video session itself, I cannot show you all demonstrations. So uh, I would uh, uh, suggest you to go to that at your free time to uh, uh, explore it on yourself. Well, now when we speak about formatting tools, we have these formatting tools, even more than that, I have just mentioned only a very few and whatever I feel very comfortable is in fact mentally, I feel very comfortable. Uh, so mentally Zotero people say that Zotero is more comfortable and people have started working with Zotero. So mentally Zotero, Jabref, Dossier is there, BibBase is there, RefBase is there, formatting. These are for some of the formatting tools. Apart from this, if, if you ask me, you can, uh, I can tell you that there is a big desk is there, mm. bibliographer is there, uh, dossier I have told you, Jabref uh, is there. So these are big flexes there. Uh, so these are some of the referencing tools that you can uh, make use uh, to make your, write your research uh, article. So these research tools, how do they help you? Let us uh, get started with Mendeley. How to download this Mendeley? Go to mendeley.com. Okay, that is the URL that you have to explore. So go to mentally.com if you want to download Mendeley onto your system so that you can make your uh, referencing tool done well and you can uh, do all the bibliography and the citations very well without any mistakes. So if you want to do that, you can go to this and then go to download option. See Windows 7, 8.1 and 10 versions for all these things. It's a, it's a free download option. You can go and download it. 
and after downloading it uh, you have special instructions also there on the page that you can take a note uh, for those who are using mac version you have to go for this option those who are using linux version can go for this so there is there are options given there so based on that you have to click and download the right version based on the os of your pc based on the os of your pc you have to download the version now after downloading the version so while uh, in the process of downloading the version this is how you will get and uh, you will get an exe file stored on your system you have to run that exe file using the yes command and run command once you give the yes command and run command this will take you to several pages as you install any other software you are installing it and you finish it you have to click on finish and then once you get finished with this then you move on to this is how see this is my mendeley page where i have just stored some of my papers alone so here you have a file option and i have an add option i can add folders i can download papers of others also these are not my papers just to show you i have added some of the papers from the journals index journals and uh, this is from one journal called fafnir which we will be seeing in due course of this lecture so from there i have downloaded a paper and i have uh, stocked inside so now uh, uh, i can add as folder itself i can store all the papers in a folder and i can upload the entire folder it's one stretch command very easy to upload all the uh, acrobat versions inside then i can create folders there is a plus option i can create folders okay i can stop suppose i am very uh, focused on one particular writer and i am uh, collecting all the articles written by that particular scholar in that case uh, maybe a professor or a researcher already a claimed researcher or a person who had already got a patent for his theory so in such a, a situation i am storing all the information so i can do that uh, i can create folders on their names and i can stock it well then uh, i can go for uh, what i uh, do with this referencing tool i tell you now so with this referencing tool once i click on this referencing tool i will see this uh, page see this is the paper that you see here this is my paper i'm showing it to you so this paper if you want to make a reference of this paper uh, this is on a actually powerpoint slide mode so i cannot uh, copy paste it so uh, if i click it will move on to the next slide like this see what happens now so there you can go and select in the previous slide you can go and select option and you can choose it you can do a control c and control v on to your uh, word file so you are choosing if it is someone else's paper that you have stopped to refer or cite in your paper that you have you are already typing in a word file you can go copy paste it and then you can do it or you can give a citation so there you will have a citation option how to cite it i tell you then come to this word open this word once you open this word there you will have a reference option see there is a reference option here uh, uh, you have downloaded mendeley i repeat you have downloaded mendeley you have uh, mendeley uh, uh, on your system now desktop now uh, now you have also stored uh, adequate uh, papers your papers and papers of others in that software and that now you want to make a reference so you are opening a page where you have typed your article this is a blank page i'm showing you just to show how to go about mendeley once you download it and you install it on your system this reference column will show this mendeley there is an m symbol seen here see my the, i'm using the laser tool to show you this m symbol this m symbol tells that this mendeley is now plugged in to my word file so this m symbol is plugged in to my word file now click on that m for citation styles and you can choose the citation style as a modern language association 8th edition or you have so many styles see i triple e style is there harvard style is there so whichever style in which you want to write your bibliography or your work cited or or your references that you have made you can choose that and you can go for done option after that what you do after that you go to this is how see this is the page suppose somebody is taking the information that i have given in my paper and they would have copied from my paper the paper which i showed there in the uh, previous slide no so that paper has been copied onto this word file now 
I've gone to the person, the third person who has taken information from my paper will go to the reference option here and insert citation is there. The person has to click on insert citation. You keep your cursor here, right? I show you the, mm. I mean, you keep your cursor, wherever you keep your cursor and then you try to insert citation, click on insert citation there the citation will get automatically inserted because you have downloaded and you have stored all the paper. Whichever paper you have stored in your Mendeley, you can, uh, uh, the citation will come there without any mistakes in whichever format you have chosen. Here it is uh, APA format, American Psychological Association. So see American APA format it is chosen. So you can choose the uh, citation uh, pattern and for the entire paper and research article, you can do your citation in that way. It is easy. And uh, suppose after finishing all these things, the entire paper, say for example, you have given 20 to 25 uh, citations, quotations, references you have made. So you have made such a lot of references, uh, uh, just a small quantity only I'm saying, 25 references you have given. So how to do a generate a bibliography? There is an option here. See, my laser light go, hovers over there. Uh, so, uh, bibliography option, go to that bibliography option and you can insert a bibliography. You click on that bibliography for the entire page. You just keep at the end of the page, click on bibliography option. All the citations you have added here will come in that APA format that you have chosen here. APA format I have chosen here. So, in the APA format, the entire bibliography will come and automatically it will get typed and it will be on my screen. It will be easy for me. I need not sit and type over that. Well, now I talk about whatever we have seen now is about mentally. So now about Zotero. People say Zotero is really easy because Zotero, you, it naturally gets, once you download, it gets plugged into your uh, uh, word automatically. See, the arrow mark gives you a clear picture. Zotero is seen here, see? So Zotero is here, so it gets plugged in. So once you click on that Zotero, you will get another toolbar. In that toolbar, same type of options, maybe in a different format. You can include citations, you can include references. So many things uh, you can do with Zotero also. It just uh, it again gives you a three column the structure as you have seen in Mendeley and it is also very simple. So people find uh, Zotero also to be very comfortable enough to uh, use a, it as a referencing tool. So I leave it to your option. So you can go and explore any of those formatting tools that I have mentioned here to make your references. Now I move on to the Next item, that is plagiarism. So I have I explained only Zotero and uh, Mendeley and other software formatting tools. I have just made a mention of those formatting tools and uh, hope uh, if you had uh, taken closely watched all the names or else you can go back to the YouTube also to get to know the names I repeat if you want. Dossier, Bibliographer, Bibbase, Bibref, uh, Jabref. So all are some of the uh, formatting tools. So whichever tool you want to browse and download, you can try with that. It's left to you. So uh, then plagiarism. Plagiarism uh, is the third component that we are going to see now. When I talk about plagiarism, in fact, I'm reminded of uh, one particular uh, um, uh, thing. Like uh, I was browsing through a journal and that journal title is given there in fact as a reference here that talks about a different type of translation today is the title of the journal so you see that on the screen on my screen now uh, so this translation today journal talks about uh, five types of plagiarism that was quite interesting for me so i thought i could share it with you so they strongly say that they don't uh, uh, recommend any type of entitle any type of uh, these five plagiarism so they are uh, they are very strict about the creativity of the writer. Well, now, uh, what are the five types they call it? Let us see. Complete plagiarism. One is called a complete plagiarism. Somebody else is writing the entire thing, a ghostwriter, but not uh, revealing the name. That's why we call a ghostwriter. No? So, but uh, you, they try, they say, no, I write for you, you get it published. So that is a complete plagiarism. That's what we're going to see of impersonating authorship. So totally, uh, sometimes you hire somebody to write like that or sometimes somebody would have written it, published it. 
you remove the name and then you have your name and you show it as your work that is totally ins impersonating a person that is called the complete plagiarism impersonating authorship or submitting publishing or someone else's work in your name that is an offense at this point i would like to make a mention of this uh, section also i think it's 1957 uh copyright act indian copyright act uh section 57 and 63 uh, calls this plagiarism as an offense so i just mentioned the legal terms also so that uh, you understand how careful you have to be about plagiarism so i repeat uh, section 57 and 53 of indian copyright act uh, condemns uh, this as an offense or uh, condemns plagiarism as an off- offense so we have to be more careful that we should not plagiarize or uh, article anywhere well direct plagiarism second type is called as a direct plagiarism what is direct plagiarism word for word copying see verbatim copying verbatim portion of a text okay copying of someone's writing without citation or quotation so you will not quote you will not give it in quotation you will neither call it as a quotation nor you call it as a uh, citation so what is a citation and quotation quotation verb or thing you follow whatever the writer says right whatever the author says you just give it in double quotes and then uh, uh, you call it as a quotation well what is a citation then citation you call, you tell the idea convey the idea of the writer in your words of course so there again the idea is not your original idea it goes back to the writer okay so there you have to give a citation so you have to duly acknowledge so both are called as direct plagiarism if you don't acknowledge well third one i move on to the third one that is called self plagiarism sometimes this this most of us will will be very careless in this particular aspect when we write what is self plagiarism we would have uh, recycling or copying your earlier published work people know immediately maybe for an academic need for uh, uh, i have to climb up the pedestal in my academia so in that case why not it is my own paper why not i give a different title to the paper becomes a tendency of a few people that is not right so it is if it is an already published paper maybe if it is a branch out because of the scope of the paper you are branching out from the paper to another idea where you are quoting that paper or you are giving a kind of a self reference you have already done that you have to acknowledge that you have already published a paper that also comes into your reference so without that you simply change information right certain information peripheral informations like subtitles and some informations a uh, hollow information a peripheral information peripheral changes with which you are trying to publish it it is called a self plagiarism and that is also an offense so without giving proper references or citing acknowledgement so to the previous stakeholders so now let me move on to the fourth type of plagiarism that is mosaic plagiarism so all these are uh, um i refer to that particular journal that has uh, g- given me a clue about all these uh, plagiarism there are some types of pages of translation today from where i have uh, taken this uh, information so i duly acknowledge the journal here so this is how we have to do it in the uh, writing also so when we take an information from somewhere we have to give a due acknowledgement that is why in oer especially when you take information like pictures suppose you are taking some picture for your uh, article and you are uh, you have to check whether the picture has a creative common license in creative common license itself you have a variety of uh, licenses you get me how to uh, owe credit give credit to the writer or the creator or without giving credit to the creator can you use it like that so uh, for all these things you have different symbols used if you are using most of us use uh, google search engine if you are uh, using edge microsoft edge and you are taking a paper you are searching a paper edge gives you pictures which are under creative common license most of you who are using edge would have come across this so without any kind of and that uh, underneath that picture you will also come to suppose it's a flow chart or it is a diagram transcoding art uh, you are doing it you are teaching in an engineering college it's a transcoding graphics and you are taking a graph from there it gives a clearly the license is mentioned beneath that picture 
in the form of symbols, right? CC, along with CC, there are certain pictures inscribed to tell you the differentiation of the license. So there are variety, uh, there are uh, different types of Creative Commons licenses that you can have for a picture uh, and uh, not only for a picture, for a writer, for many things. So you go to creativecommon.org and you can explore it on your own. Uh, suppose you ask me, can I use this picture? Of course, when it is under CC, you can use it, but you need to know under which license of CC it is. That is also most important. So the license will clearly say that you are entitled to do certain things and not certain things. So you have to read it and you have to do it. That's why I asked you to go to creativecommon.org. So that will give you a clear picture of uh, how to uh, make use of that to avoid plagiarism. Right now, um, fifth one is called as accidental plagiarism. When we talk about this accidental plagiarism, this too happens many of the time. No? So when content is not properly cited and copying occurs due to negligence or misquoting, most sometimes we keep, we are teaching into the profession of teaching. So we will be using quotations, uh, the unawares, right? Unawares, uh, we would have quoted an, uh, a particular writer without knowing that we would have made it into in-text. So in the part of the writing, it will become part of in-text without knowing that as we have been using the familiarity to that particular text or the kind of exploration into the text for a long time, you have been working on a writer for a long time. So unawares, you will start emulating the style and um, the words also over that in some, some times. So the, those things can be called as accidental plagiarism. Now I move on to the plagiarism checkers, how to avoid it with plagiarism checkers. Uh, small SEO tools is a plagiarism checker. That is what you are seeing on the screen now. So small SEO tools.com slash plagiarism hyphen checker. Go to this URL. It is an online now plagiarism checker URL. You can do this plagiarism checker here free, but for thousand words. See the word count is there. Only for 1000 words, you can upload your file. The arrow mark tells you where you can upload, the how you have to, and where you have to upload the files. So what are the formats supported here are told here. .tex text format, .txt format, .doc format, .vocx format, .odt format, and .pdf format, and the rich text format. RTF stands for rich text format if you are typing it in notepad and things like that, you will get a rich text format. Well, now, uh, so all these formats are supported. So such formats are supported here. So you can, uh, if your document comes under any of these extensions, file extensions, when you save the document, then that can be uploaded. Apart from that, you cannot have a JPJ, JPG, JPEG, PNG, all those things are not supported. See, it is very clearly says that only these formats are supported. Sometimes you have uh, Mm, some other format and you're trying and you say that it is not getting supported means you always should have a check on which format you're uploading. And you can take it from your drop Dropbox. Suppose you have saved your paper in your Dropbox or you have saved it in your Google Drive. From there again, you can upload the uh, mm, text into text for checking your uh, checking for plagiarism. Then uh, the word count is thousand. Only thousand words it will check. More than that, it will not check. So once you click on that, you will see uh, it, it checks. It checks and it gives you a report immediately. It will tell you how much, uh, what is the percentage of copying will be told there itself. Uh, it will have its own inscriptions like uh, whether it has 8% from where it is copied, whether it is unique or it is taken from some other source. So under the title unique, unique means you have done it by yourself. And um, under other uh, plagiarized will be uh, given in quantifications of percentage. Then duplichecker.com. Most of you would have come across and tried this also. This duplichecker also does it only for a limited word. Word limitation is 1000. And duplichecker, again, the same type text, PEX, DOC, DOC, XODT, PDF, and RTF formats. Only that much you can upload and not other formats. You cannot upload any other format other than this. Well then, now uh, 
I also give you another plagiarism checker which you can try with, and that is um, uh, one sec. And that is uh, qtext.com. This qtext.com is one other plagiarism checker uh, where you can uh, go and try your plagiarism checker and citation assistant. You will get a citation assistant also here. That's why I copied this qtext.com. You can go and explore. I'm not showing a demo for this here. I will show a demo for sure for one uh, particular information, especially when we come to indexed journals. Then Grammarly plagiarism checker. This many of you would have tried and come across. At this point, I would like to tell that uh, it is, there are many like uh, rewordify, uh, Grammarly and all those things. So, well, when we speak of this uh, rewordify, you give a text and uh, the word, I mean, the text gets uh, reworded, they say. No? So that is also plagiarism. So we should not do that. Taking one copying from one particular paper and trying to redraft it and calling it as my paper is also an offense. That is what I said already. It comes under the types of plagiarism which when I was discussing. That is also called as a plagiarism. You plagiarize the style of the person. You plagiarize the content of the person. So you have to acknowledge through your citation. When you plagiarize, you, you, we don't have rights to plagiarize the content of anybody. So the content is very, very essential to essential. And only the creator uh, owes the responsibility. And the only the creator of that content should take the credit and not me when I write. So I can cite the creator. So that's what uh, I mean, right? So I this is how Grammarly works. Grammarly page you're seeing now. Now, plagiarism. So this is one other uh, software you can try with that. So you can paste the text and Bing supports it. Google as well as Bing, Google search engine as well as Bing, Microsoft Bing supports this. So plagiarism is also there. Then. I come to this Turnitin. Turnitin software, you have to create a login ID. It is not free. And certain portion, I came across this one particular thing, how to use Turnitin. Plagiarism checker free online was there. You go to this uh, creatorsavants.com, Turnitin plagiarism checker free and explore it on yourself. There are people to support. See here, there is an arrow mark. We are here. There you can go for a live chat and you can ask your doubts there how to make use of this Turnitin software. Well, now, uh, Viper plagiarism checker. So when you speak about this Turnitin, Viper and uh, right check, what are the, it is a juxtaposition of uh, uh, that Viper and uh, check of Turnitin. So see, all these are, uh, entitled a person is entitled in viper whereas in right check only this much if a payment is made probably uh, they will be able to get all the support so when it is a free cost free of cost or it is only say for example it is 0 0.20 pounds uh, as a free one free version then only this much of facility you will have in right check that is what it says Plagiarism prevention that uh, simply works, says Urkund. Many universities uh, prefer uh, Urkund and uh, Turnitin. Most of us are now on Turnitin. Uh, Turnitin and Urkund are uh, very well established and practiced even by uh, universities. That's how we have to go about plagi plagiarism checkers. Uh, there is uh, one plagiarism checker called uh, Plagiarism Checker X. That is also there that you can download it totally free. In fact, you can stock it onto your desktop and you can do the plagiarism checking later. So that way also, when I was browsing across the information, I came across this particular uh, software that is called as Plagiarism Checker X. So you can try with that also. Uh, and I have not tried uh, that software. I have tried only with uh, these uh, uh, SEO tools and duply checkers. Uh, if you want to explore that, you can explore that also because it says that you can download it offline. You can do the plagiarism checking. And I haven't tried, in fact. I have no idea about uh, uh, it, but I came across this information so that I'm sharing it. Definitely, I'll go and explore that too, maybe later. Now, uh, indexed journals. When I speak about indexed journals, naturally, we 
the first option is UGC care list. So we think uh, we can get started with UGC care list. When we say UGC care list, what does the care stand for? It's a consortium, right, for academic uh, research. So uh, this, uh, what does this consortium actually do? This consortium has uh, four sections now, four divisions now for North, East, south and west so four universities are chosen as nodal centers these four universities do run their own journals also they are care listed journals so that's for your information so you can go to this website ugc.ac.in there you have to create a login id once you click on this blue color ugc approved list of journals you will come to this page i mean you it will ask you to create a login id I have created a login ID. I showed you on the screen how I have created a login ID and I have entered into my login. Once I create a login ID, only then I'm entitled to browse these pages and journals. Before creating a login ID, I cannot arrive at this page. That is, a, you can make a note of it if you have not explored this UGC website. If you have already explored well and good, you can get started with that. Then UGC care list group one is there and UGC care list group Two is there. So you have this group one and group two list talking about group A journals, group B journals, group C journals, and group B journals. So there are four types of journal groups that are uh, focused. And when you speak about this group, uh, group one list and group two list, you naturally come across the, the first order journals or the tier one journals where we speak about Springer, where we speak about Scopus, where we speak about uh, WOS. WOS stands for Web of Science Journals where we speak about, when we speak about Web of Science, science Journals, naturally it comprises LCVR, Science Direct, Springer and all those things. Well now, uh, so do we have journals as an English teacher? Or do we have journals there adequately to publish it uh, under Springer? Or of course we have uh, Taylor and Francis. So you have many, right? So under these publishers, uh, sh how should I explore my journal? So those journals are also listed in care. So uh, I need not think that Scopus is totally different from that of a care list. Care list also comprises Scopus index. Care list comprises certainly uh, WOS indexed uh, journals, of course, they are there. That's why they have the categories like group one journals and group two journals. Under these two categories, we have A, group A journals, B journals, C journals, and D journals. You would have seen that also. How to go about this, we are going to see now. This is how I have to go. Uh, after logging in, I have gone to that uh, Arts and Humanities Citation Index, I'm clicking on that. So if I click on that, I will arrive at this page. Once I click on that, I will come to this page. I have copy pasted all the pages so that you will easily understand uh, the scholars who are watching it. You know, maybe who are writing PhD thesis, who are writing your research papers will understand how to explore it. Under Arts and Humanities, you have 316 paper journals. Under Multidisciplinary, you have 36 papers. Under Social Sciences, you have 267 papers. Suppose you are so, so interdisciplinary. So naturally, we'll not, uh, being a person from our side, we would prefer to work on any of these three, right? Suppose you are a bilingual writer and you want to, you are a creative writer, you have, of course, journals for that under Indian languages. You have in several languages, there are UGC care publications that's happening that you can explore under this. You can click on that and you, you can explore. I show you how you can, once you click on that and you can come, you can go page by page and uh, that will be shown here underneath and you can go to page by page and then you can uh, search there. So uh, see, uh, these are some of the journals that I've come across and Black Camera, uh, it's, it's Indiana University Press. Say, okay, I feel like opening this journal. How should I open this? I have to click this view option. Once I click this view option, I will go to that Black Camera page. So Black Camera that is highlighted in blue. I have to click on that Black Camera. I have now arrived at this Black Camera journal now. So now this Black Camera is by Indiana University Press. And I see the ISSN code and what is it about? All those things are. Now let us uh, uh, listen to what is it all about. What is this black camera all about? Black camera is an IU press journal where African American studies, African studies, black feminism, film studies, gender studies, movie culture, political movements, popular culture, queer culture, race and ethnicity are focused. 
This journal is totally devoted to the study of documentation of the Black cinematic experience and aims to engender and sustain a formal academic discussion of Black film production. This also uh, includes reviews of historical as well as contemporary books and films, research critiques of recent scholarship on Black film, interviews with accomplished film professionals, and editorials on development of Black creative culture. This journal challenges uh, received and uh, established views and assumptions about traditions and practices of filmmaking in the African diaspora. So people who are interested in uh, or working on African diaspora or African studies or whatever I have mentioned so far, like queer culture, race, ethnicity, African American studies, all those people who are writing your uh, academic uh, paper or uh, research scholarly article can try with this journal. Okay, that's it. Uh, and uh, we move on to uh, the uh, journal now. So this is how the journal appears and uh, you can go about uh, uh, the journal and the comparative philosophy, one other journal paper that I have copied here. So current volume, so there are why I have copied certain pages here, there is a reason, of course. So if you explore these uh, URLs, I show you. If you explore these URLs, probably you will come to know that you have certain offers for writing. It is the right time that you can explore it. Then I come across, uh, this is also one such interesting journal from UGC Careless that is called Fafnir. I showed you in Mendeley that I have uh, added a paper from Fafnir. You can download paper fully here. You need not pay and get the paper. This journal gives you the provision of, this is the journal that you're seeing on the screen now. This is how it looks like. And from here, see the current issue option. And there is a call for papers. You can uh, write, there is a call. Uh, and uh, you can check the date and you can uh, check the authorial policies and uh, you can send a paper if you're interested in science fiction. Then IAFOR journals of arts and uh, humanities. Of course, many of you would have come across, some of you would have also published in this. So I leave it to you. Uh, so there again, you have, uh, if you go to this uh, IAFOR, you come to know, see this journal, the list is indexed in DOAJ, as I told you, it is directory of open access journals. These are the indexing authorities. You have cross-reference, Google Scholar, you can find, once you publish this, these indexing authorities will, uh, will acknowledge your paper and naturally when somebody copies that, you know, that will be very evident. So you make a, an indexed publication with an impact factor journal. So uh, see this one I have copied, see here, Please do not send a manuscript, it says. Now IAFOR says that don't send manuscripts now. That's why I copied this. So IAFOR is closed till, uh, it says, no? so till, this is a submission period set for eight issue. Now, till then, autumn 2020 is canceled. Submissions are closed for the remainder of 2020. So it have, they have taken enough and more. So you can simply without exploring the journal, if you're sending your paper to, this, uh, uh, to such journals when they are not out, uh, accepting papers your paper will not be accepted sometimes you will not get a reply and you will be dejected so better avoid it go explore the entire uh, uh, framework of the journal and uh, understand the authorial policies authorial guidelines and then get started with if there is a call especially for special editions there are many calls this is a translation today journal from where i told you this journal clearly mentions five types of plagiarism. So I was mentioning it under the content, you know, subcontent uh, plagiarism. So that's where it uh, talks about. From here only, I have got the clue of talking about those five types. Well, now, uh, uh, so this is very essential. This is how we go about finding and exploring indexed journals in UGC care list. Now, I was mentioning, when I was talking about UGC care list, I was mentioning about, uh, what is that? Uh, I was mentioning about uh, indexed journals, uh, WOS, uh, and uh, I was mentioning about Scopus. Well, now let us come to that portion also. That is very, the tire one journals. Let, let us discuss that also. Authentic journals, we have, we find two types of journals actually even in Scopus, right? So uh, Scopus and index journals, we find two types of journals. One we call as authentic journals, another we call as uh, 
predatory journals. These predatory journals where you pay money and you publish, that is called the predatory journals. Authentic journals where you need not pay money. You need not spend even a single penny to publish. Your work is expected to be very creative, that's all. So you have to have ample creativity and you should have a research focus really and it should be your original work then definitely one day or other, keep sending your papers one day or other, you will definitely get a green card from the paper and you will all be happy to see that your paper is getting published in WOAs and Springer and Elsevier and uh, Scopus, right? So you will be really happy. So you can keep trying it. So what is very essential to get published in authentic journals? Your originality. So it has to be totally original. That is the entire demand, not money. So money is not at all needed for many of the uh, journals, tire one journals. What you have to do is, of course, it takes time, sometimes one year, one and a half years, sometimes even two years. But you will get a reply uh, in which uh, edition it will be published. So you will get a reply uh, stating that uh, it is with such and such an editor, it is with such and such a reviewer, so you can access your paper. Or else sometimes, no, some journals are very genuine in telling you, they will recommend you, your concept is not uh, getting accustomed to our arena of research and publications. So why not you try with uh, this journal? So they will sometimes suggest the names of the journals where you can give a try and where you have a scope for your article. So that kind of a suggestion also, if you are keeping on sending papers to very many journals, indexed journals, you would have definitely experienced this kind of letters also from genuine editors. So they are really, uh, that's sometimes, no, it's like encouraging whether they publish a write-up or not, they give a right suggestion to, and they ask us to send it to some journals where, uh, and by titling them, right? So they will tell them, I myself have received such uh, information and it really works out. So as per their instructions or as per their suggestions, if we follow, that article will get published. Maybe uh, we have to give a try. Then predatory journals, they will, there are, uh, of course, uh, predatory journals also, I don't say that they don't uh, demand quality. There are predatory journals that are, uh, that demand quality, of course, good predatory journals that are also indexed. So that is also there, but uh, that is paid publishing and they are also peer reviewed. And there are, uh, apart from all these two categories, you have one other set of journals where you will be paying and people will say in two days time your article will be published, in a week's time your article will come. So those are not uh, trustworthy. So those are, uh, those com you make compromises there and you feel that I want to submit my thesis, I want to do this, I want my promotion, I want to do this and that. I would not recommend or suggest such a type of uh, publishing. Well, so go with the best publications and indexed publications. Of course, it takes time. It takes a lot of time for exploring. It takes a lot of time for research. But continuously, if you have been trying, definitely you will start counseling people on how to do or how to write research papers. Where to publish becomes a question. And I was answering, try with UGC Care List or WOS or Scopus. So try with these uh, journals I've already told you. Then explore indexed journal publishers. So when you explore indexed journal publishers, how do you go about uh, the exploration? So you can go with Springer, Elsevier. So in all these places, you need to create an login ID. That's very essential to explore into the journal. Everywhere you have to create a login ID to explore into a journal. So usually, you know, I have, uh, uh, when you are in a WhatsApp group, people do send, this is the indexed list, 2020 indexed list of journals. UGC care list of journals, they will give an indexed list. We all get the index list. We save it in our drive and what we usually do, we will be very comfortable. I know the entire list. List keeps changing. So list keeps, of course, changing. So they say it is a 2020 list. So maybe if you go to the previous year, 2019 list, it will be different. Certain journals will, which were there in 19 will not be there in 20. Certain journals which were not there in 19 would have added would have been added in 2020. So all these changes are continuously happening. That is why you have that care consortium is doing that. Suppose you feel that some journal is worthwhile to be added into UGC. You can recommend through your institutional head. That is a, there is a possibility. There is a um, four, um, I mean, 
pro forma for it in the UDC website itself. You can uh, download it, you can fill the form and you can send it to the you know, consortium, right? So that they will consider. So if university professors and HODs and uh, institutional heads are recommending certain paper, certain journal to be included in care list, they will definitely consider and they will check whether they have the standards and metrics and that will be added. So there is a provision that can also be done. Uh, suppose you have been continuously publishing with a particular journal and you see many people are publishing with a journal and um, you can recommend it. That is possible uh, through the through the proper channel. That's what I meant. Then Science Direct, Taylor and Francis. So all these publishers, Sage Publications, which I didn't mention here, some of the journals from Sage Publications. So many, uh, um, I mean, publishers and university publications, which you speak about university publications, Massachusetts, John Hopkins, Princeton, Cambridge University, Oxford University. So all these journals are also included in Tier 1 publications. How to get started with this master journal list. How to get started with this master journal list. I, in fact, I made a video also. I don't think that I'm running short of time, so I'm not running. Uh, yes, of course, I'm running short of time, so I'm not uh, showing you the video. Instead, I show you only these pictures. I give you the video link that I have uploaded in my YouTube. Uh, channel. If you're interested, you can go and watch. I give you the YouTube web. Um, uh, it is e-teaching resources is the YouTube uh, title. I'm not promoting my YouTube. If you're interested, you can watch how to browse this master journalist, especially. So I made a video and I uploaded it. There. Okay. Now, uh, let me see how um, we can go about this here. Yeah. You go to njl.clarivate.com. There you have to uh, create a free account. Uh, so you create a login ID for yourself. Create after creating a login ID, how you can search. See, you create a login ID and you register yourself. After you register, you see your name here. Once you are logged in, you see your name here. Here you can click on the search journal option. Once you click on the search journal option, you will arrive at this page. When you arrive at this page, you can type whichever journal. Suppose you are not aware of the list of journals. Uh, you only have the WhatsApp group uh, indexing list. So WhatsApp group, many uh, lists are sent. No? So this is a 2020 list and I too get like that. But even then, I'm not saying uh, you should not rely on such information, but see whether such information are also genuine by yourself. Uh, take certain papers. Suppose uh, you're interested in that WhatsApp group list that is being sent for 2020 journal list. Take any one of the journal from the list and try to anyhow, even then, even though you have a list in hand, you have only the list in hand, what you have to do is you have to create a login ID and you have to explore it on your own. That is very, very essential. Anyhow, you have to land only on this page. No other go. Only with the index, uh, you cannot do anything. So what you have to do is take any journal of your interest from there and then type it here and search whether that journal is available. If that journal is available, then definitely you, you in this navigator bar, the last information also here, you have to click on this and enable this. That journal list will not tell you whether it is under DOAJ. That journal list will not tell you the restrictions. So filtering options can be possible here. So you can filter it and check. Only then you will understand how many journals are there according to your focused, when you focus down, when you narrow down your research perspectives, which are the very suitable journals you will arrive at. So that's how you have to do with the navigator. So I would recommend you to go to the URL directly to explore. That's the best way. Then now. Uh, uh, you can go to this, you can enable it and you can uh, narrow down, specify your uh, research. Then I have clicked it off, made a filter as arts and humanities. Language option is there. See, there is a language option because you find the journals that are printed in Spanish, French, German, Japanese. So I want to restrict uh, the text that appear on my screen to be English and the journals that are published in English. So I can set the language that facility is there. So now I move on to the next slide to show you. See, this is how I have to select from category. From the navigator, left side navigator, I have to select the category. I can choose arts and humanities. So now I am searching for journals. See, I can search for journals for English language and literature. So now I find journals that are available for English language and literature. 
once i click on that journal english uh, language studies see there are two options one publisher website another one journal website so i click on journal website and i go to the journal page when i click on journal website i will come to know i will i will be directly taken to the journal page now uh, what are the other things informations you need to take care here of course you can click on the journal website here you can get to know the aim and the scope of the journal here itself instead of going and exploring into the journal better click on this it will take to the right page of the journal and uh, you need not fumble over the journal page it will take you to the right page of uh, you will not land upon the home page but it will take you right to the right page and directly you want to get to know the instructions for the author so okay you can click on this and you can go to the instructions for the author from the master journalist itself and then you can check about how the plagiarism screening is done usually how the plagiarism screening is done that one that information also is given here so you can that's how you have to choose apart from all these things when i speak about open access what else i should understand i was talking about a creative common license right see the license given here for this uh, journal is given here this cc stands for creative common once i publish my article here my article naturally gets the impact factor when i try with the impact factor journal naturally that impact factor and in addition to that uh, uh, when it is creative common license that means people can make use of my uh, paper also now oa statement so everything you can check author holds copyright without restrictions that is given here what is the answer you see no so that means author does not hold copyright without restriction so there are certain restrictions with which the author holds a copyright there are certain restrictions what i understand from the statement i understand the author uh, suppose i am the author i am sending the paper i am getting my paper published i have certain uh, copyright i have of course author holds the copyright but not without restriction certain restrictions i have certain things i cannot do even though i have published my paper certain things i cannot do so that's what i understand sometimes no Uh, so not sometimes many times when you publish these papers no you will not be able to open up your own paper because unless you pay and uh, uh, read your paper for that you need uh, the library access or an index number so that you can view your paper you will get your paper published but the paper copyright and everything will be with them that is also there so you need to check all these things before you send a paper no we cannot simply get started with the index or the list which we get in the whatsapp group so we have to explore these things before we send it to a journal that's very essential then now uh, three uh, language linguistics and literature this is also one of the papers uh, one of the journals see the selection policy i copied this to show you how the selection selection policy is done open submissions indexed and peer reviewed so the articles are for open it's an open access journal it is an indexed journal i understand there is a tick mark i understand it's an indexed journal it's a peer reviewed journal it's of course an indexed journal because i'm taking it from mjl clarivate uh, so i'm very confident about it now book reviews this is the information for book review this is for special selection and review so i move on to the other journals on i have copied certain journals which have a call for papers offers and other things under certain uh, i mean different titles like this cultural studies and other things so these are the journals which you can go and explore journal of literature culture and literary translation so this you can do for your uh, exploration and atlantis journal that is there so i am doing i am showing you for under literary theories and uh, cultural studies so these are the journals you can try for literary theories and cultural studies multicultural shakespeare there are uh, journals called literary criticism literary theories itself there are journals on shakespeare itself very many journals are found uh, and i have chosen a selective few where you can get started with and international journal of literary criticism literary theory and philosophy of literature so this is one other journal then british and american studies some of you would have tried publishing your papers in this also and uh, this is for innovative poetry so journal of british and irish innovative poetry there is a journal for uh, british and irish innovative poetry the journal called this is hungarian cultural studies so uh, i told you this is for literary theory and uh, cultural studies now so under that we are seeing i told you you need not pay publication fee for that only i have copied this the journal does not charge for submission of manuscript the journal does not charge for processing publication manuscript see these two things 
So it is under cross-reference and it is under COPE. So these are the uh, uh, one particular thing here I want to make a mention. Keyword search is very, very essential when you type uh, and send your journal. There are a lot of keyword generators. You can go on Google how to generate a keyword for your article. The best keyword will get you a lot of citations. In fact, in due course of time, we have to learn a lot about scholarly writing. One such thing is this keyword also. So I don't know whether uh, uh, you have been very uh, acquainted already with keyword uh, uh, mean generators. So I would like to, if, if at all you haven't come across this idea, you can also try with keyword generators, which could be the right keyword for my paper. You can sit and explore at, before you type the keyword in your abstract. Usually people write the abstract keyword, they give a least importance or whichever phrase they find to be a familiar phrase, they just type those phrases then they send it. That's how the keyword is sent usually. So, but there is a proper planning for keyword. So that if that is done, it will fetch in a lot of citations for your uh, originality of your work. Then you can take a little care. Well, then grounded theory. This is on grounded theory, a journal on that. Uh, see, these are some of the news.jh. Uh, some of you would have tried. This is for children's literature. Uh, those who are working on children's literature can try publishing with this journal. And uh, an international journal, it's, a, it's for humanities and social sciences where you have philosophical ideas, your philosophies you can bring in. Uh, word, text, word and text, a journal of literary studies and linguistics. This is not only for uh, literature, but also for linguistic studies, you can try this journal. Uh, then journals on theater and media literature. So I just classified it under different titles under which you can explore. So we call it as early theater. There is a, so you can, how submission guidelines can be explored. I have just opened up a drag and drop window and I have showed it to you. Bell figure, uh, that is for literature, right? Edinburgh University Press journals, right? See, film philosophy. So those who are working on film literature, media literature can try that and film criticism. Well, this is from Taylor and Francis Online, so Musicology Australia. You have to create a login ID to open it up. Uh, Perfect Beat, again, it is on media literature. Then uh, Studies in Australian Cinema. You find the journals on women's studies, okay? So let us go in, let us explore certain journals which are very relevant to women's studies. There is a journal titled the Women's Studies itself under Taylor and Francis. So I myself have tried uh, this particular journal. So of course you have to create a login ID. You can try with this journal. There is a, you have a lot of, uh, you get calls from um, journals like this. This is uh, Asian Journal of Women's Studies. Another journal, the previous one was on women's studies itself, plainly the um, title of the journal is women's studies. This is Asian Journal of Women's Studies. Two different journals. Women's Studies in Communication. Everything is by Taylor and Francis. So as I'm just uh, clicking on and going to the different uh, web page, don't think it's the same web page. Three different web pages we have seen now. First one was on Women's Studies. Second one was on Asian Women's Studies. Third one now is on Women's Studies in Communication. Then uh, all the three by Taylor and Francis. Well, then institutional, uh, again, project news comes into picture. Well, this is also on women's studies. Then uh, journal of Jewish women's uh, studies and gender studies. So this is ex exclusively on uh, Jewish women's studies. So women's studies and in international forum. This is by Elsevier. See, we say that we don't have journals. We have ample opportunity, of course. We have, uh, only thing is we have to sit and explore. Journals on environmental humanities or what we call as we say eco-criticism, environmental justice, we say zoo poetics, we say e eco-feminism, right? So there are many journals. I have just pasted only five journals for that here. So environmental humanities is one journal. They call it as environmental humanities. And uh, archives for environmental and occupational health is one. Uh, from where you can take information, the previous slide. No? So environmental communication is one journal. That's by Taylor and Francis. Then Taylor and Francis, see environmental, all are indexed publications, environmental education and research. Many of you might be working on environmental and eco-criticism and uh, perspectives, environment. Like that. So it is an interdisciplinary. So you have a lot of scope and a lot of indexed journals in environmental ethics and the criticisms. So this is another journal uh, called environmental ethics. 
then environmental history. So there are so many. Then journals on communication and digital humanities. Today we speak of ICT and digital humanities. So these are some journals for English language teachers, especially who are working on language studies, English language. So International Journal of Communication, this is digital, uh, hu digital humanities. Uh, this is the, this DHQ uh, stands for digital humanities. And uh, this, uh, that is one particular uh, journal. Then International Journal of Language Education, IJO, you would have come across, across languages and cultures. So interpreting languages and culture. This is uh, for, it is a call for paper from here, from this journal. So I copied it here. If you want to give a try, you can give a try. Multidisciplinary journals is common for all of us. We can try. Rukkata journal, we can try. And there is a call in Rukkata journal recently. Uh, you can explore this web page and you can try publishing with Rukkata also. And uh, journal for the academic uh, study of religion. For theism, there are a lot of uh, uh, journals. And I have pasted only this much well. So whatever we have seen now are under uh, Web of Science Group. Now this is Scopus. What you're seeing now is Scopus. And Scopus also a list there. You have to go to, as I said, MJL Clarivate. You have to go to Scopus and you have to create um, a login ID to explore all the indexed journals. What you're seeing here is free Scopus journal list. Only Scopus I want to check. Only 2020 list I want to check. So go to Scopus directly. That is the best way. If you get a consolidated list which comprises WOA, Scopus, everything, you will be in utter confusion. So it's better you narrow down your search and then you go, uh, go according to your wish. I want to publish only in Scopus. I want to publish in WOS. Well, go by your search. There you have to take, uh, you have to be a little wise in choosing the journals. So the index journals, Arts and Humanities, Scopus indexed journals option is there. I just scrolled down the page and I pasted it here for you all to get it. See, Arts and Humanities, it is here. This is how the page will appear. This is the arrow mark I've shown you. Click on that and you will arrive at that page which, which you have seen. These are exclusively for English teachers under Scopus indexed. I have gone to it one by one and I have copied, explored the pages and I have copied it. And uh, these are the journals I find from Scopus list. So these are all Scopus list, all are under Scopus. So you can try with all these journals. So that is left to you. So that's how you can get started with your publication. And we have come to the last component. Before I say thanks, I would like to uh, uh, show you how to get uh, go about with the Google Scholar. After you publish your uh, article, you have published many indexed articles, right? So in that case, naturally, what you have to do is you have to create a login ID with Google Scholar. Go to scholar.com. When you go to scholar.com, you have to, as, as you create a Gmail ID, you have to create a login ID with your institutional address. You, you need to have an institutional domain. You name of your institution, .ac, .in, like that you will have an extension, no? so along in, in your mail ID. So such a mail ID is, uh, such an extension is very essential to create a Google Scholar ID. Otherwise, it will, uh, uh, you can also create on your name, but uh, that particular place you cannot fill up, uh, fill up, and it will be left blank. And uh, I suggest you when you create your Google Scholar uh, profile, create your profile as a public profile because it is your professional merit and your research metrics that you proclaim. So it will be useful for others. Don't think that somebody will come and steal your information. It, you should be happy that somebody is citing your information. So be uh, proud and happy to be a Google Scholar. So let us see some of the uh, information, how to get started with this Google Scholar. This is the profile page. This is how it will look like when you start. And you have to fill in all these details. <coughs> and you have to create a login ID with Google Scholar. Then, excuse me. Now, uh, let us see some of the world best uh, Google Scholars, right? I took it from this Webometrics. You can go to Webometrics. Really interesting to see Michel Foucault to be the topmost, right? So Michel Foucault is there, the topmost with a lot of citations. So, uh, and uh, Perdi, Perry Bodo, and uh, you find uh, Michel Foucault, right? So with a lot of citations, see the citations, H index and I index. So such a, 
lot of uh, people, the first five to 10 people I have copied, Sigmund Freud, you have seen, and Albert Bandura. Uh, now you're seeing Bert Augustine. So it's a mix up of, uh, I'm not saying it's only literature people. It's a mix up of science, literature. It's uh, in fact, uh, philosophy. Uh, and uh, let's see, Noam Chomsky's, this is the citation index. So I was very happy to go through all these things. Karl Marx, we speak about Marxism. Uh, Amartya Sen, we should be proud, Nobel laureate from India, and Jack Derrida, right? So Derrida's citations that we are seeing now. Uh, uh, then that's how we have to get uh, started with. Let us be Googled in our research profile. So with that, I thank the authorities who have given me 